Something I've realized that really kind of caught me off guard is how many people spend more money on shit than they can afford. funny thing to say, but it's actually very basic. I'm actually talking about the amount of people that have emailed me in the last six months because I've been on this rant lately of trying to get people to move back in with their parents at 30 and 40. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm hot on this. It's because there's this incredible thing. How many people here own their home? Raise your hands. The people that just raised their hands, 90% of people that own their homes don't use more than 50% of their home. They have three extra bedrooms that they don't need. They have a living and dining room and a fucking den and all sorts of shit. The amount of people who live in homes that they've extended themselves financially to afford that don't use half of that home is fascinating. The amount of people who are in debt so they can drive a car that has a logo on it that makes them feel better because that's keeping up with the Joneses or other people's judgment is fascinating to me. What I didn't realize was the fact that 30 fucking 5% of this audience wants their side hustle to be their careers, but the reason they can't is because they can't quit their job because they need their job to pay for dumb shit to impress people they fucking hate. And so, especially while the economy globally is frothy, I am aggressively throwing up for debate to the third of this audience that is trying to get their side hustle to be their job for them to give a real thought to what it would look like if they were to downsize their home and their car and their vacations and their watch to put themselves in a position to be happy. I think over the next decade, as we continue to start really discovering as a human race, mental health and happiness, that we are on the pre-dawns of people changing what success looks like. When I really look at the world, and I've, I grew up super humbly, I've spent my 10 years ago career in the, in the explosion of Silicon Valley, I've really been lucky to see all sorts of different things going on. It is super cliche, but absolutely true that the money happiness thing is just a funny thing. People that don't have it think it does bring happiness. People that have it know it's not true. And when you really look at suicide data and things, depression data, it's fascinating who struggles with it. I really do believe as we become dramatically more thoughtful about happiness versus money, that a lot of people are gonna start really looking at the things they amass and how much that is a choker to their happiness. And so what really excites me right now is how frothy the economy is globally. And I know so many of you can take advantage of selling high, positioning yourself to be happy. I think it's a very rogue point of view It's completely against the propaganda that you see in your Instagram and Facebook feed 24-7. Everybody's pushing all sorts of fancy stuff and fancy trips and fancy things. I genuinely believe that the majority of people here can dramatically, dramatically put themselves in a happier place if they honestly consider downsizing things that they don't use. So just a random thought that I'm super passionate about. In a world where I'm asking you to create so much content, the fact that so many of you do not create content because you're so bent out of shape by the feedback in the comments section. This has become a remarkable fascination of mine that people literally aren't living their lives to their happiness or fullest because Sally Pants 36 said that you're ugly or fat. People absolutely crippled by the judgment of others without really understanding what it is. Let me say it here right now so there's no confusion. If a human being takes the time out of their day to consume your piece of content, consume it, and then spend time to leave a negative comment 
to you after consuming your content, think about how shitty that person's life is. Somebody literally has the time to consume your content and try to drag you down. My friends, misery loves company is one of the most interesting sayings that has been in culture for a long time. It most manifests in a very poor way when I watch parents drag their kids into shit because they're upset. But it's one thing, and I have empathy, a lot of it, when it's your mom and dad dragging you through shit because that's deep. But when an anonymous person with a fucking icon of a rugby player is dragging you through shit, you have to get into a place where that does not bother you. It makes zero sense. I mean, literally, and I get shit on all the time, you get that many comments, you get shit on. When I see it, it's the only, I mean, I don't feel bad for me. I genuinely feel bad for them. I'm fascinated. I've never in my life taken the time to consume somebody's content and then shit on them. It makes absolutely no sense. So please, if you're one of these individuals and there are a lot of you in this audience that are not producing content because you're worried about the judgment. You know how many people email me, Gary, but I have to put on makeup. Why? Because your grandma told you when you were seven? But Gary, the lighting, why? You don't like the bags under your eyes? Good news, everybody has bags under their eyes. There is an enormous amount of insecurity in the system that is stopping people from creating the thing that they want and it needs to be talked about in a much bigger way. The judgment of others is a fascinating thing. Do you know how many people say to me, Gary, I don't think Facebook and Instagram, that stuff doesn't work. Yet in the other mouth, during that same dinner, all they talk about is how social media is fucking up the government or countries or the world. Literally, you're telling me that Facebook's powerful enough to change the global world and governments, but it's not powerful enough to sell some of your t-shirts or your landscaping business services? My friends, take it for what it is. We are all obnoxiously fortunate to be living through this era right now. What this era is, just to quantify it, is we are now at the maturity of the internet. The internet now is at scale. We all live there. It is real. It's not what I grew up with, which it was coming. It is here, it is at scale. And the reality of the situation is, how many people one more time with side hustles? Raise your hands. Everyone, stand up again, side hustle to turn into your business. I need this, because this is the point. Side hustle to turn into your business. I just need every single person that's standing to understand one thing. Your grandparents, couldn't even dream to turn a side hustle into their business because the internet didn't fucking exist. They just had to eat shit and live their life and put food on the table and a roof over their head and then fucking die. I'm being serious. We are so outlandishly fortunate to have this era and what everybody's doing is spending all their time deploying cynicism and looking at the things that are negative about it without realizing it is the full empowerment to whatever you want if you're willing to be a practitioner and actually learn this shit and execute it. This era will go away. Many of you follow me know I'm all focused on voice and Alexa and all this. It's all gonna happen. Shit changes. Whether it's blockchain or AR or VR or voice, this internet era, this golden era as we stand here today will go away. And then, for the same reason that I didn't make any fucking videos for five years because I had nothing to say, there won't be a great deal like influencers and Instagram and Facebook. And you will deploy regret because you've heard me pound it down your throat and you did nothing about it. So please, Melbourne, do me a fucking favor on my 37 fucking hour flight to get here. Please make this event, this talk, the time that you actually go home and start fucking executing. Because I'll be very honest with you, I'm fucking tired of the thousand, one thousand emails every week that I get that are the same exact thing, titled. I don't know why it took me four and a half years of listening to the same shit to finally do it, but I'm really glad I did because in the last seven months I made $80,000 and before I used to be $40,000 in debt. Please make tonight the beginning of the next chapter of your life because when it goes away, I'm gonna get quiet and execute and you're gonna wish 
You're gonna wish you did something about it tonight. Thank you.